Right, so today's big question is, is it better to, better to buy with cash or finance? Strip these questions from our YouTube comments. I've got three other questions to put to Jess as well. Let's get into it. Great. Hi, I'm Jess. I'm Adam. We are ForTheLandlords.com. We help landlords get more money, reduce their hassle, and get their time back. Like Adam says, this is Adam Asks Me. And uh, questions from YouTube. If yeah. you've got any other questions, burning questions that you want answered, put them in the comments below. We strip them out. And then this is a, a Q&A that we do mm. regularly. I think this is part four. So it's becoming a regular part thing. Four, yeah. uh, go on then. Well, I know the first question. The question is, is it better to buy cash or mortgage? Yeah. Depends. Great answer. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm. Depends well, on what you're trying to I might pull you achieve. up. I'm, you've already answered it in the comments. Oh, well, so let's yeah, see. Yeah. See if it so, matches. So it, what it's, it's more than just stripping it out. I've answered these once already, but they get more and Jess more. Jess answers comments. every question that anyone puts yeah, as a comment in YouTube. So yeah. these are from there. I thought proud of because... A lot of people may watch the video, not read all the comments, so you might not see a question that got answered. Exactly. So let's, let's exactly. make a video. Repurposing content, I think marketing people call it. Yeah, well, um, we have, we're a sourcer, so we've got clients who, this is a very real question for them. And lots of our clients, a, minor, a minority, but a significant minority, buying cash, keeping cash. And mm -hmm. it's got to be said that property works fantastically well that way. It's yeah, a property definitely. bank account, you put the money in a bank, you get a return. You put the property, the money, same money in a, in a bank, in a property, you get a better return mm -hmm. when you put your rental versus, um, sorry, your rental and your capital growth together. You're generally getting more than in the bank. Um, so for, for lots of people, holding in cash mm. uh, helps. Personally, I buy with a mortgage. The you buy with, but you buy with cash, you mean, and then you mortgage it, right? Good point, very good point. So I was. You don't rarely buy with a mortgage. I from very what rarely seen. buy the kind of houses that we buy <clears throat> with a mortgage because most of the houses can't. that we buy we, mm. you, they are they are unmortgageable when we buy them they need new kitchens new bathrooms uh redecoration the kind of thing that if you're going to buy it to live in that uh, would yeah. actually be fine there'd be yeah. no problem at all um your lender would let you live in that house but it's called buy to let exactly so when yeah. you get a buy to let mortgage the lender is going to say, well, actually, is anybody going to rent this thing? And if they did, is it compliant? You've got to meet some certain standards before the bank thinks, yeah, yeah this, this is ready to go. So it's got to be ready to go. So most of the houses we, we buy, we buy in cash, but then I always mortgage. So answering this question, cash or mortgage, yep, yeah, if, you, if you're a cash, cash guy, and one of, one of the things I notice is um, people with you know, a business or a, a job that's just making good money and they just need to put somewhere, some, that, that's fine. The older you get, the less likely you will be to use mortgages or highly geared mortgages. But personally, I mean, I, I've, I've slowed things down. When I was in my 20s, I was buying quite highly geared and now I've, I've slowed that down. Um, but I always put a mortgage on them. The classic example is if, um, well, it's actually, it goes back to stocks and shares and property. It's a nice comparison because you can't use a mortgage on stocks and shares. You can't get a mortgage on stocks and shares. So if you put... Uh, 20,000 pounds into stocks and shares and the market moves 10% and you made two grand. If you take the same 20,000 pounds and put it into a house with 20% deposit and 80% mortgage and the market moves 10%, mm -hmm. you've made 10,000 exactly, yeah. pounds. That's why I mortgage. So basically then, you're saying you prefer it's better to buy with cash and then finance it later rather than buy something with finance because you're more limited, it has to be in an equitable condition to begin with. Yep, absolutely. Perfect. What other thing is, I've definitely noticed as I get older, I'm, I'm winding my loan to value down mm -hmm. and yeah, I'm, I'm definitely deleveraging. So yeah, yeah. as you That's get natural. older, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, right, so how long does it take to get to five properties? Mm -hmm. How long does it take to get to five properties from zero? A common question, start. people ask that all Pretty the time. Is it five people, or ten? Five or ten, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or how much to get to a certain X, you know, £10,000 yeah. a month, £5,000 a month. Oh, it's just like, you know. a, yeah, how long? Mm -hmm. Benchmarks it. Uh, five houses, what, with one capital? But if you've got yeah. 120 grand, the average house that we buy is 80 to 100 grand. Mm -hmm. If you've got a little bit more than that, let's say 150-ish, mm -hmm. to get five, so you've got jump. Every time you buy a house, we aim to buy it cheap, cheap what it is, add some value so we can buy, refurbish, rent and refinance, strip the capital back out and go again and go again and go again. If you go to go for that method, then five houses. And you're dictated by how much money you've got to begin with, obviously. Exactly. Yeah. So we need to decide you've got enough capital that's going to allow you to do that. Yeah. 
Then it should 100% be. yeah. That, that's the first question. Yeah. That's Let's say you've got 150. 150, because every house you buy, you won't strip all your capital back out, mm. it will be... 12 to 15 grand tied up, probably, if you've yeah. done it right, if you've done it with us. Exactly, yeah. and each house is... Um, yeah, 100 grand, 100, 100 grand, yeah. 100 grand so every grand. time you, if you buy a house, it's 15, 30, yeah. 60, 45, 60, yeah, yeah. yeah, left in. So your one hundred fifty thousand pounds will whittle its way down to about ninety. Mm -hmm. You've not lost the money. You've got thirty grand equity in each one. So you actually you're richer overall on the balance sheet. You just put some of that cash onto your balance sheet, expanded it actually because the house is worth more and whatever. whatever. So you do one at a time every eight to nine months. That's you the can, thing. You'll have your money out to the next one. So it's eight times five. Four years. About that. Maybe yeah. Right. Some people would say six months, a bit too sporty. So you've got to own it for six months before you refinance it with almost every lender. Not all lenders, but almost all, which means that you could say six, 12, yeah, two and a half years. Three and a half years. But yeah. three and a half, four years would be really? realistic because you've got to find the house, you've got to renovate it, and you've got to wait six months before you can even put the paperwork in for some, mm. some mortgage lenders. Mm. Um, just stuff will get in the way, just definitely. Yeah, bear in mind, I'm talking about re waiting until you've owned it for six months before you mortgage it. Mm. Land Bay, I know, is a lender that will go earlier. Mm. Um, you might downvalue a bit, so you might leave a bit mm. more in. But yeah. I would say, yeah, uh, three and a half to four years. Yeah, be, be sensible. Be, be sensible. Yeah. The, the, I like five as a number. Yeah, how, yeah. how long does it take to get to five? Because, and here's the thing, if every house you buy, renovate, refinance, rent, rent, refinance, leaves in £15,000 and you're taking six to nine, six to eight months to do each deal, six to nine months to do each deal, the rental profit on each one of those properties is topping up your pot quicker than you're depleting it after the fourth or fifth house. It becomes mm -hmm. self, self well, um, the Warren Buffett phase, it's, it's a snowball, it just gets going after that. Sure. And, 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 and the first three, your capital pot's being depleted, your fourth or fifth is starting to be topped back up again. Your sixth, you're heading down the hill and your snowball's getting bigger. Perfect. Okay, next question. Mm. Do you get builders in prior to the purchase? Um, should you make them aware you don't own the building yet? Uh, we don't, but we kind of do because we yeah. carry a schedule of works around in our head. Yeah. And we have our builders roll on from job to job, so they know we have a stream of projects, yeah. so they know what the pricing structure is going to be. So we don't. I would, if, if you're doing it yourself, yes, yeah. get it in, get your offer accepted, um, then ask the agent if you can then go in with your builder. And survey. And just a survey. Yeah, you have, can a get survey. A, have a survey done, and then go, go in with your builder if you're doing it yourself, I, yeah. I would definitely. Yeah, um, yeah. of course, yeah, don't lie. They, they, of course, they're yeah. going to know you don't own the building because yeah. they still have a for sale sign yeah. outside. Yeah. Yeah. So don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, if you're doing it yourself, if you're unsure of the price of stuff, definitely get your builder in first. You might find you've overpaid and you, you need to reduce the price. Um, our guys don't need to get the builder in because they've got their cost of works, they yeah. know what everything's gonna cost, they're professional property sources, but. Yeah, classic mistake though, because you'll pee the estate agent off if you, mm. you gotta know your numbers. So we don't get the builder around because we carry with us a schedule of works. We yeah. know when we go around this house, before we put the offer in, we put it in with the knowledge that it's gonna cost 17,250 pounds to do the renovation and that stacks in our head before the offer goes in. If you then find out it's going to cost £22,000 you need to reduce your offer, then well, your credibility with the agent's gone. Yeah. So um, it could even be that you take your builder around with you on the viewing. Yeah. The problem you've got then is you need to view 20, 30 houses before you buy one. Mm -hmm. Not many builders are going to be trailing around behind you. Um, True. I, that's a tricky one. I I'm, going to, I'm going to change my mind I, on that I, one. I've got a better answer to that question. Go on. If you're worrying about things like that, yeah, don't do yourself. Do you know what? I was about to change my answer to that. It's not like we have rehearsed or anything. That, that was it's like if you, the builder's not going to follow you around on the no, buildings. No, 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 no. You can't offer otherwise. You can only do it if your builder is your mate. You're doing it together. Or yeah. Something, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if your builder's your mate and you think you can get them on the viewing before you put the offer in, yes. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you haven't got the knowledge in your. Yeah. You, sh you shouldn't put the offer in. Talk to me, I'll help you find a property. Yeah. Um, right. right, the last question, very quickly, this one, and then we'll answer this in one sentence. Um, do you do the handhold service? The handhold service is our service for sourcing and renovating a house for a client. Do you source and renovate um, HMOs? 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> Loads. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We talk about a lot about single yeah. S's. Yeah. Small S's, commercial, commercial HMO, yes. Yeah. That's it. Let's ask yeah. some questions about yeah. property. And it's mm. always easy to illustrate things with a with a, with a, with a single letter. But HMO, house in multiple occupation, is, yeah, yeah. done loads of them. That's loads. where you take a house, chop it up and rent it up. I take chop it up, yeah. Put, put rooms in, put en suites in, so you can rent out a three or four bedroom house. There's five or six lettable rooms. Mm -hmm. It's more complicated, amenity standards. You've got to get everything, building yeah. rigs right and get your license and stuff sorted out. But we'll hold your hand through all of that. And yeah, you've done loads of them, haven't you? Mm. Okay. Mm. Answers yes. There we go. Done. done? Yeah, like, subscribe, share the video, do all, do, that do all those things. We appreciate it. Thanks very much. Bye.